Machines Breaker is a returning and very powerful linear fusion, capable of wiping out teams back to back with its fast charge time and insane aim assist, where you'll always be landing a headshot, always. It's the number one fusion to use within Gambit for its snappy and accurate shots, with just its present being enough to prevent other players from engaging just out of fear. But as it is an exotic, it's not a weapon you'll come across all the time, so you'll most likely face the Crooked Fang users instead, which can be 50-50, depending on the player in terms of skill, and is a relatively good linear weapon for invading and hunting players. But this video isn't just about the Queen's Breaker, no. One question that's been bugging me for a while is, can we make a mini version of the Queen Breaker through the Crooked Fang? As it may be possible to land one, but with RNG in a way, at least we can see what the conditions are needed to achieve such a goal, and what necessary perks and stats are required. So let's start off with the stats for the two weapons. The Crooked Fang has the following. 41 impact, 34 range, 36 stability, 36 handling, 35 reload, 61 aim assist, 65 recoil direction, 38 weapon size, and 25 zoom. The Queen Breaker has the following. 41 impact, 55 range, 82 stability, 46 handling, 64 reload, 60 aim assist, 60 recoil direction, 40 weapon size, and 25 zoom. As you can see, the stats for the Cricket Fang compared to the Queen's Breaker are very large and thin in comparison to each other, with the Queen's Breaker's stability, reload, range, and handling outright dwarfing the Cricket Fangs, which makes sense as this is a legendary versus exotic comparison. Everything else, though, seems to be relatively on par, with each other with Fang's recoil direction being 5 more than the Queen's, aim assist being only plus 1 from each other, and both zooms and impact being the same, which will require 2 body shots to kill its players. One thing to note, the Crooked Fang charge time is only 533 at base state, while the Queen Breaker is 633 at base state, with only a difference of 100. But the Queen's Breaker charge time can be halved depending on the scope being used, with the combat site offering a weapon 300 charge time instead of the standard 633 charge time. Most linear fusions tend to have around 540 charge time, with their strength leading to good handling speed, range, aim assist, recoil direction, and zoom. With that in mind, there's still a pain to work with with their cons falling into their charge time making little room for hit and runs, and flinch from other players being capable of bugging your aim off and thus wasting a round. Ideally you want to have perks that focus on the pros of the weapon as much as possible, so it can outweigh the cons and allow you to get the drop on the players first from long to medium range engagements, to combat the weaknesses of the weapon. So now here are the perks narrowed down, for what you should ideally be aiming for. Masterwork. So pretty simple, you want to have a charge time of plus 10 reduction, as the quicker the charge time is, the faster you'll be able to fire a single shot back to back, which for Gambit, you're going to be doing a lot of, plus limited time means you have to make your shots count. There is a negative side to this though, and that is maxing out your charge time takes away impact from your weapon. But funny enough, this isn't a big problem, as it's so small that it doesn't really change the way the weapon works, so don't worry about it. Now both handling and range are good choices to have as well, as handling offers faster ADS in time, which is nice for Linears, and range offers better accuracy, and better accuracy means more similar shots. Reloading isn't needed, as like I previously mentioned, Linears tend to have a good loading speed anyways. Plus in Gambit, if you pick up a heavy brick off the wall, you only get 3 shots, so it's practically useless to have this perk anyways. Plus, stability now is also a straight no-no, since it doesn't really offer us anything, so don't bother with it. Battle choice. Battles to focus on should be around either offering good handling speed or further range, as both will allow you to be more accurate upon shots fired, quicker radiant speed, and better stickiness at long ranges. These are the only ones you will be aiming for, as the ability offers nothing to us since Linears are single fire charge weapon, so their first shots will always be accurate. Reload speed is okay to have, but honestly not that needed, since reloading on Linears aren't that bad, and the impact is well and fine, but you need to focus more on headshots anyways. Out of the section available, I found that only two scopes available in the tree offers us a noticeable and positive increase towards the stats. 4 bore, which offers us plus 15 in range and minus 5 in handling, and minus 10 in stability, and hammer forge rifling for its plus 10 in range with no minus spec attached. These are the only two battle choices I have found that can further enhance the weapon's pro stats with actual changes. Small bore and extended battle are also a good option to have if you don't get the recommended following but the first two are what you ideally want to be get going for, if anything else. Battery choice. The battery choice for a near can make or break the weapon, depending on positive effects it can offer. 
In our case, we want to only reduce our charge time or increase the range for the weapon, as stability, magazine and impact increase is nice to have, but truly isn't worth investing on. So the only choices we can go with is accelerate coils for plus 10 in charge time, while taking minus 10 for my impact, and projection fuse for the plus 10 in range. Sadly, this is all you can go with as nothing else worthy is offered unless you want to increase the magazine size, which is also fine to go with. So let's focus on perk column 3. Within perk column 3, we have a limited selection of perks to choose from that focus more on bolting our current stats to fully max out on, with the following few perks that can either enhance or downright be useless, depending on what other stats roles you have already. Out of the limited selection, I found out the following perks being quite useful. Opening Shot offers a boost towards our accuracy and range on our open attack, which works well for a single fire weapon as we are always trigger because the delay it has been a single fire based weapon. Next we have Snapshot Sights, which offers a fast aim down sights and pairs well with handling stats as you can instantly pull out and quickscope a player, if that's the type of player you want to be. I wouldn't say it's my top 3 perk as weapon down sight is its charge time, so you won't be as quick as a queen breaker, but it's the closest you can get. Moving Target offers a increase towards our movement speed and target acquisition, while moving and ADSing. Great perk to use since you're going to be ADSing a lot anyways, and with the increased movements means you can dodge and weave between opponents when fired upon. The target acquisition boost is also helpful for giving you a secret aim, which offers no downside for invading. Now all the ones I haven't mentioned are either useless because certain situations trigger them, or have no use at all, or just outright useless. But by all means do experiment if you feel like the ones I recommended aren't the best choices. Now, perk column 4. In this final column, we have the following. As a final note, at this point, the perks you choose should only be around maximizing the weapon fully or improving on the area of the weapon if what other aspects are complete. Perks such as Backup Plan, which reduces your charge time and increasing your handling speed for a short time, can be useful if you tend to swap your weapon in and out to make use of the perk, or if you get rushed by other players. It can, when active, outcharge the Queen Breaker, but only for a short duration of 5 seconds and then has a 5 second cooldown, which the Queen Breaker doesn't have, so correct timing will be needed on your end to make full use of this perk. Next we have Rangefinder, which offers an increased range and magnification for a weapon, which I find is good but not that needed unless you want to maximise on the magnification of your scope, which to be honest can be useful for some, but I've learned that adding on more range can help with allowing your stickiness while aiming to be more active, so you can land shots much more smoother while actually making this a perfect perk to run with if you're someone who's going to be staying at, let's say, long ranges. Next up we have Rampage, which is the final perk of cover and is a worthy choice to pick as it will allow your shots to be more forgiving on the first activation parts. Now, instead of landing headshots, you can land body shots that, if at level 3, can one-shot body shot players. Only downside to this is that you need to land and kill 3 players to get the third activation going, and sometimes this might not always work depending on the match of players. Plus, depending on the time limit you have, it might not even be possible to pull off. Kill Clip is also welcoming if you have a fast reload speed and can also one shot when activated, but can also go to waste if you don't quickly use and maximize around it. So, both perks are good, but not as good compared to Rangefinder and Backup Plan. So, the conclusion. Alright, so the final conclusion for the go to God Roll or Queen Breaker Roll are the following that you should kind of be aiming for at best. The scope you want to be going for is Hammer Forge Rifling, Battery Type Accelerate Coils, 3rd Column Moving Target, 4th Column Backup Plan, Masterwork Charge Time Reduction plus 10. Combining the final following perks will give you a solid and close to near fusion that can act similar to the Queen Breaker and a worthy choice to use if you don't have the Queen Breaker at all. Now getting such a role might not be easy, but all the other recommended choices made can help you with knowing which perk you have is ideal to keep and whether the role you have is good or not. So thank you everyone and thank you Guardians for watching this video as it was a very long one I'm afraid. Now if you enjoyed the video do like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and I hope to do more in the future and comment if you've got something to say as well I'd love to hear your thoughts. But once again thanks again and I'll see you guys soon.